Uh, so, hello everyone. I'm Cody Baker. I'm a neurodata scientist that works at Catalyst Neuro, uh, and I'm here to tell you how to convert your data to NWB the easiest way, which has two primary entry points, currently NeuroCon, which is a Python package, um, and Guide, which is an upcoming uh, graphical application, no coding necessary, but only supports a handful of formats right now. Um, so yeah, I'll dig into it. So a little bit about Catalyst Neuro. We are a fully virtual, completely international team of neurodata scientists. Uh, we're spread all over the world. Uh, I'm lucky, actually, this is the first time so many of us have been in one place for these kinds of events. But I'm lucky here to have help from Paul Agkison right over there, uh, Sonia Weigel in the back. And so it's not just going to be me walking around helping everyone uh, convert their data this time, which is great. Uh, also, Ben, he knows how it works. <laughs> uh, but he'll, he'll also be working on a ton of other things. So, uh, yeah, we're very friendly. Just if you ever have any questions, come up and ask one of us. And we'll also kind of be floating out on the rooms and asking in all the ways that we can help. Basically, it's my job for everyone that came here with data that they need or want to convert for their lab. It's my job to make sure you leave here with that data in NWB format, at least most of it as much as we can. So starting off with NeuroConf, Python library for automatic conversions. This was a package created to combat several key challenges that we've noted uh, throughout the years. It's hard to convert neurophysiology data to a universal standard uh, for three main reasons. The sheer diversity, there's a lot of propri proprietary formats that come out of acquisition systems and processing software. Uh, currently, NeuroConf supports about 40 different ones. Uh, and I know every year I keep hearing more and more uh, that there's you know, still like maybe 10 or so that we need to adopt. Uh, there's also just growing complexity within the experiments themselves. More and more experiments are starting to use two, three, up to five, six, seven data streams each representing just different types of raw acquisition, different types of intermediate processing, and different types of final stage output. Uh, so all of that ultimately needs to go into NWB, which means someone needs to figure out how to ingest and rep represent it. And lastly, kind of my favorite, is the volume. Uh, you know, five years ago, a terabyte scale might have been considered pushing it. But uh, these days, you're really starting to see uh, the boundaries being pushed in both temporal and spatial resolution. So since we're at Genalia, I have to bring up like NeuroPixels and ECE Fizz, which is now becoming pretty much the standard for high density recordings. And even if we look at the uh, version one probes of NeuroPixels, those sample at about a 30 uh, kilohertz rate. And if you do the math over 384 channels, that's about 23 megabytes per second of data for every probe. And more and more people are starting to use multiple probes. So you just multiply that by the number of probes added up. That's one terabyte of data up from every probe every 12 hours. Uh, that's a lot of disk space. And be, just so I'm not uh, focusing just on the ECE phys folks, if we talk about microscopy, uh, in particular something like whole brain imaging from some uh, example resolution that I've seen before. Uh, 1,000 by 2,000 pixel imaging plane. You can do about 40 scans per plane per second, and that can yield a total of 160 megabytes per second of data. Add that up, that's a terabyte every two hours. So uh, you could fill up a system very easily with that kind of setup. So just a plug here, a nice reminder that I'll also be mentioning throughout these user and developer days. Dandy Archive is happy to store all that raw data completely for free. It just has to be an NWB format. That's all they say. So I think that's a fantastic offer, and I think you should take them up on it. So as I mentioned, NeuroConf was created to combat these challenges. First, uh, the diversity. We now support 40 different formats. Uh, that number continues to grow. And the way it continues to grow is through interactions with the community at events just like this. Another big 
feature of NeuroConf is it automatically extracts format-specific metadata. Different acquisition systems dump various header files that contain all kinds of rich information about parameters uh, that normally you would have to dig through manually, uh, parse yourself, and then figure out where it goes in NWP. NeuroConf handles all of that for you. Uh, we've also seamlessly integrated the data engineering. Um, you should still check out the talks over the user days on advanced things like advanced I.O. if you're interested, but all of that has also been just built in at every level of NeuroConf, so it uh, can handle data on the, ter on the terabyte scale. Uh, lossless compression can reduce your file size by, uh, on average, 35%. We've seen better, we've seen worse. Uh, and that's zero data loss. Like it's, you can randomly access it exactly the same way as an array uh, you normally could from a binary file. Uh, it's just uh, compressed chunk-wise. And we also optimize those chunking parameters for streaming from things like the Dandy Archive, which is an awesome feature that we'll be talking about several times over the next couple of days. But basically, you can upload a 300 gigabyte, one terabyte NWB file to Dandy. You'll never need to download it again. You can just stream everything you need uh, through uh, the tools that we've built. And it combats the variety problem by, allowsing, by allowing very easy combinations from basically an arbitrary number of data streams that you happen to have in your experimental setup. And to explain, uh, oh, well, I'll tell you how to install it first and then explain how we um, uh, handle the data streams. Uh, so installation is all pretty easily, all pretty easy. Uh, basic pip install through a Python environment. Uh, always recommend starting from a clean, fresh, probably conda environment, uh, just for maximum stability. But this will give you the package with uh, no extra frills. You will be able to import uh, the data interfaces, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, but if you need any third-party packages for handling a specific format, an error message will, click, will uh, quickly inform you of those. Uh, of course, you can avoid those entirely. If you already know the names of your formats, you can use uh, what are called extra requirements, which is a fancy pep and salt thing, which uh, just means if you use square brackets and you have, for example, Spike GLX is one of your formats, all you have to do is type spike GLX inside those square brackets and it will automatically install anything else that it happens to need specific to reading that format. Uh, there is a extra requirement for full installation and that gives you every secondary package and tertiary package uh, for every single 40 plus format that we support. Uh, that's mostly for developers. Uh, it's pretty heavy. I don't generally recommend it unless you actually work with uh, all 40 formats. Um, just a quick plug for extra requirements syntax. Uh, you can always specify multiple ones. So uh, if you have an experiment that you uses TIFF files, uh, you ran sleep on some behavioral video, and then you process your TIFF files with the extract algorithm, you can specify all three of those as extra requirements and it'll aggregate all of the secondary requirements and install them for you. Uh, quick mention, if you're a Mac user, the one annoying thing about extra requirements, you have to wrap them in quotes to get it to work. Otherwise, it will give you some not terribly readable error warnings. Okay. Uh-huh. So that is why I recommend always using a clean conda environment. Now, if all you're installing is NeuroConf full, you should not encounter any conflicts, except for certain versions of Python on M1 Max. But non-M1 Max, perfectly fine on all Python versions, 3.8 up to 3.11. And I know that because it's in our testing suite. We uh, test everything in NeuroConf daily and on code changes. Uh, every time a little piece of code changes, we uh, have a continuous integration that runs every test on every format, on every example data to make sure nothing ever breaks. 
as long as it's a clean environment? Yeah, that's a very good question. Any other questions so far? Okay, I'll just explain quickly uh, the strategy for how NeuroConv works, especially at uh, dealing with data streams, is we modularize all the data streams into what we call data interfaces. And here we see a um, example setup where I have a NeuroPixel recording stored in Spike GLX format. I ran KiloSort on it, and I also have a a behavioral format used by a particular lab called Vermin, which is like a virtual reality uh, interaction setup. And every NWB file, every experiment has metadata that we like to associate it with. Um, the most important one is the session start time. We need to know ideally exactly when the session began. Um, and it's good to include as much else as you possibly can about yourself, the experimenter name, um, the institution that you're at, the lab. I always like to see people add session descriptions that actually fully describe what is going on here, or there's also another field called experiment description. Um, we'll get a little more into all the different fields in just a bit. But actually, uh, the subject information is going to be especially important uh, Dandy now requires several fields to be present in all of your NWB files in order to be valid for upload. Um, I'll elaborate on what those are in just a bit. But a data interface essentially maps one-to-one -one onto each of the data streams in your experiment. These all get combined at the end of the day into what we call NWB converters or converter pipes. And it is those converters that ultimately spit out your NWB file by combining all the different data interfaces. And this kind of structure makes it really easy to mix and match. So if I want to try a different spike sorting algorithm, like mountain sort or something, I can swap out Kilosort for mountain sort very easily, just one line. Uh, just replace the Kilosort interface with mountain sort interface. Or if I file curated it, which produces slightly different files in Kilosort, then same thing. Or if I used a different probe setup, or if I had multiple probes, just throw in the data interfaces. It's completely modular. Okay, I mentioned the metadata. Uh, NeuroConv is built off of metadata dictionaries, and the, these map onto all of the metadata that would end up in the NWB file. These are always, it's always policy to add as much metadata as you possibly can because it provides really valuable context for people that will eventually reanalyze your data. And many things are necessary to meet NWB and Dandy requirements. The NWB converter orchestrates the conversion. You would have one NWB converter per unique experimental setup, ideally, although the, the newer converter pipe setup uh, kind of loosens that a little bit, makes it a little more dynamic. Um, the NWB converter can also be what's responsible for aligning time across data streams. I have a, a, I have a slide specific to that towards the end. And uh, yes, the critical thing about the converter well, when I mentioned every interface automatically extracts metadata from those source formats, the NWB converter is also responsible for merging all of that. Uh, so that's where that magic happens. Uh, so what does it look like in practice? And I will mention quickly, um, my slides tend to be a little heavy on the links because I like to have lots of URLs that lead you to different places across NeuroConf tutorials or guide tutorials or what have you, so um, I have published these slides on the NWB Hackathons page, which you can get to uh, via a much shorter URL, either the QR code that you see on your screen or bit.ly slash NWB dash user days dash 2023. Uh, but a simple snippet of a NeuroConf conversion, in this case, just a one-off conversion of a TIFF file that contains multiple stacks uh, through multiple pages in that single file. Uh, the TIFF file is called Demo Movie. I import my TIFF imaging interface. Uh, TIFF is one of those formats that doesn't automatically encode when it was turned on, the exact timestamp. 
So uh, we do insist that you use Python date time to set that. In this case, I made up a number, uh, 2020, 1, 1, 12, at 1230 on January 1st, 2020. And then you initialize the interface by pointing it at the TIFF file, nice and easy. Uh, again, another thing about TIFF is it doesn't, the basic TIFF offering doesn't by default record the sampling frequency of the microscope, so you do need to specify that by hand. Um, we have other TIFF-based imaging interfaces like for scan image and Bruker that um, do because those other proprietary microscopes do dump very nice header files that contain all that very valuable information. But for this, you need to specify the sampling frequency by hand. I'll talk more about the richness of the metadata structure in a bit, but as a minimal example, you can see I fetch the metadata from the interface, I update the session start time, and I'll, that's all I need to be able to run my conversion. I specify it to an output path that will be my NWB file, and I call run conversion, and that's the magic method. Well, reason one is provenance, but the bigger reason, reason two, is temporal alignment. Oliver mentioned this briefly, but all temporal data streams, all temporal information inside an NWB file must be relative to the session start time. Now, what's really important is that relative bit, but that just makes it all the more important to, as precisely as possible, encode the known start time. I have a whole slide on the temporal alignment stuff, so we will we will definitely get there. But um, yeah, that's why we place such a high importance on that one field. Actually, like, so creating an NWB file only requires, I think, a handful of pieces of metadata, maybe like three. Although I think the identifier we auto populate. Um, so pretty much the only one you ever really need to specify is the session start time. Session start time. Do you at least know the session date? What is the session date? I don't know the answer to that one. What I will say is we're loosening the restriction on exact temporal um, specification. If you don't, if you did not record the exact timestamp that you turned that you turned your first acquisition system on, um, it is okay to just have the date itself. Um, but gosh, I don't actually. I guess best practice would be just make your best guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Ben, Oliver, Ryan, any thoughts on Oh, well, it's also kind of an analogous question to say someone seeking to um, implement HIPAA protection against uh, patient's data. So if they can't specify the exact date of the, uh, you know, clinical session, then they would just fill it with a dummy date, right? Yep. 
So yeah, very good question. Um, so uh, answer is dummy date, even though that's not the best. Okay, so for demos just like this, um, oh yeah, I totally forgot to post this on the Slack channel. So let me do that really quick. So as I mentioned, all the links are in the um, presentation. The presentations are posted on the GitHub for the NWB hackathons, but I'm also posting all of these links in our shared Slack channel. Um, But anyway, if you navigate to the documentation for NeuroConf, go to the conversion gallery. This lists all of our currently supported formats, and clicking on any one of them will lead you straight to uh, a snippet just like you just saw, although some of them may be a little different based on what's available in the header files, um, as well as instructions on how to set time zone to your date time, assuming you know it, and then uh, at the very bottom, there's also some demonstrations for how to combine multiple interfaces. This is, again, a pretty uh, minimal snippet here. Um, but it shows that extra step of how to initialize uh, multiple interfaces, and then the extra two lines required to wrap those in what we call a converter pipe. So once you have your interfaces initialized, in this case, the same as the TIFF file I was just showing, but let's say you ran Sweet2P on it. Uh, Sweet2P saves a folder with a bunch of files. You just point Sweet2P segmentation interface at that folder path, and it should initialize, and then you just pass it into your converter pipe. The converter pipe reads everything it possibly can, and you just call run conversion on that, and it should give you your NWB file now with two data streams in it and you can insert any number of other data interfaces you want into here, including ones that you may have written yourself. Um, catalog. Oh yes, um, there is also the catalog of NeuroConf projects, which may have be of interest uh, to some of you. These are actual full end-to-end -end pipelines that have been developed for various labs, they're all open source, public um, projects that we've done in the past. Now they do all use various versions of NeuroConf um, and also its predecessor, NWB conversion tools, going back for pretty much three years now. Um, and those can show you what it's like in practice when you actually have like custom data streams or really end up temporal alignment. Uh, so those can be good references for that. And we also always link you to the dandy sets, the published dandy sets that resulted from those pipelines. Okay. Mm Okay, so timestamp injection, I'll take that one first. That's a part of the temporal alignment feature, which we recently added, and I have a whole page on. I'll show you how to do that. Um, the first one depends exactly on how we've implemented the Sweet2P reader. Um, now, Sweet2P will ingest NWB files. Is that what you're asking? If the round trip is equivalent, basically? Uh, by that, you mean Sweet2P can also save NWB files through it. Um, no, our write procedure is written using our side of the ecosystem. Um, their side does things differently. They are not equivalent. And in fact, my actual recommendation would be to you would be to save Sweet2P as Sweet2P and then run NeuroConf 
on the Suite 2 p The reason for that, I know it's super convenient to be able to just save as NWB through Suite 2 p but we are able through NeuroConf to keep things really up to date as they happen, whereas updates to the Suite 2 p software happen on their time scales, which maybe isn't always uh, as high of an importance as NeuroConf places. That would be my suggestion. Um, yeah, both are technically possibilities to, they'll both encode the same underlying data, right? The difference is how the data is organized on disk, all those fancy data I.O. procedures, and also the metadata, as you're asking. Yeah. We should make a little project out of that uh, if we have some time in the next few days. Uh, we can do a deep dive if you want. Of course, if you do not see your format listed on the conversion gallery, we would love to support it. So um, all you need to do for that is request support by filing an issue on NeuroConf. And what we really like to add that is a small snippet of example data, ideally 10 megabytes or less, that has both the data uh, necessary as well as um, the metadata header files as you would normally create them. Uh, with those pieces of information, uh, we can generally uh, put put it together for you, uh, although it also helps if you already know of a Python, open Python library for how to read the data. Okay, so everything I've shown you so far is small snippets of Python code. But if you don't feel like coding in Python, there is also a text-based file specification, uh, specifically a YAML language. Um, that is very easy to read and very easy to write. And once you create a .yaml file, all you need to do is run neuroconv on that file from the command line, and the whole thing will happen exactly as the snippets just uh, demonstrated. And what do these YAML files look like? Um, they look like this. So maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, they're very similar to the other uh, examples I was showing you earlier, but you can define, say, top-level metadata that never changes over all your sessions. That would be like the name of your lab and your institution. Um, some conversion options we use commonly uh, is called stub test. This is something that you would use set to true the very first time you ever try running a big, heavy conversion, and this basically creates your NWB file, but it snubs all data values at like a pretty small number of frames, like one megabyte of data per data set or so. Uh, and that just makes a whole pipeline run instantaneously, really helps you debug things. Um, but once you've debugged everything, you just set that to true or just uh, delete these lines altogether to actually perform the entire conversion. And in this example YAML file, I have three data streams, an AP band from Spike GLX, an LF band from Spike GLX, um, and I applied phi to that. And then I have several experiments. Uh, one is called YMAZE, another is called Open Exploration, and this first experiment has two sessions. And both sessions inherit the same common metadata uh, that the subject is navigating a Y-shaped maze. But each session has slightly dis different source data. Here I'm just for example purposes demonstrating uh, in one session, maybe I only want to convert the AP band. In another session, maybe I only want to convert the LF band. Uh, and both sessions happen to use different uh, mouse subjects. So I encode the mouse metadata differently there. Um, this was basically the predecessor to the graphical interface, which I'll be very happy to show you in uh, about 10 or 15 minutes here. Um, but still, this can be a little more convenient to write than Python code if you're in the mood. Uh, so, a uh, note about behavior types. I talk a lot about how NeuroConv works off of proprietary formats. Unfortunately, and I'm sure most of you know, a lot of representations are, of behavior are pretty ad hoc specific to your lab or your experiment setup. They're not proprietary or their usage is not widespread outside of your lab. 
Um, there are some exceptions. You know, everyone uses video formats. Everyone uses audio formats. A lot of people use spreadsheets like Excel or CSV or TSV. Um, Deep Lab Cut and Sleep, very popular for pose estimation. So those are the exceptions. Those are these. Those are the behavioral interfaces that NeuroComp can interface with. Now we are open to supporting more, um, possibly from .mat files or .mpy files. But we, what we really need for that is use cases to be able to ensure that we're able to design something that actually meets your needs in an efficient way. Um, so usually that is the most common part. Uh, that is the most custom part of any NWB conversion you will do. You can start with NeuroConf to create base files, and then you can append those files with your behavioral streams. Um, but the appending will require a little bit of actual PyNWB or MatMWB code, so be sure to make that tutorial session after lunch. It's the first one once we get back. Okay. A couple of new features in the last year that I'm very excited to uh, present. Um, so we have these uh, multi-stream converters. So I mentioned a data interface represents like the lowest direct connection between a single output data stream and its corresponding representation in NWB format. But a lot of formats nowadays are starting to have multiple streams built in, uh, even some that are cross-modal like Bonsai. And so simultaneous behavior plus neural recording, uh, instead of having multiple data interfaces that you then manually have to put into a converter, uh, NWB converter or converter pipe yourself, um, we're in the process of making more and more so-called subconverters. These act like data interfaces in that they can be included again inside of another NWB converter. Uh, but for convenience's sakes, they will automatically aggregate all of the data streams, all of the data interfaces for that specific format for you. So an example of this would be like Miniscope. Anyone that's uh, used Miniscope will know it produces several subfolders uh, on your system. And some of those are for the uh, actual microscopy. Some of them are for behavior. And so all you need to do for this converter is point the Miniscope converter at the folder path, and it will just handle all of that for you. Very convenient. Uh, also, Spike GLX is another great example of that, especially multi-probe. So if you have multiple probes, multiple bands, you know, you could have upwards of four or more individual interfaces. That's a lot of typing. So to reduce the typing, all you need to do is point the Spike GLX converter pipe at your Spike GLX folder, and it will navigate through all the segments, all of the probes, all of the bands, and aggregate all of that. Very convenient, especially for <laughs> NeuroPixels. Um, OK, an advanced feature is metadata customization. I've kind of alluded to it throughout this presentation. Um, but a recent feature that we added is you no longer need to actually call update on those dictionaries. If you're familiar with uh, Python dictionary structures, if you need to update a field, you usually call the dot update method with a key and value pair. Um, we've actually designed it in a way that you can nest it arbitrarily by key and just set it directly equal to the values, uh, which is also very convenient. Um, there are two main components to the NeuroConf metadata structure, and that's the NWB file level and, and the NWB file subject level. Um, those are your two most important ones for all file-specific metadata, although any other data streams you're using will generate modality-specific names. And so these dictionaries can be pretty big, but if you print them out in your console by looking at the metadata ECFIS or metadata OFIS or metadata behavior, they will show you all of the different um, pieces of metadata that they were able to extract automatically from the source files. As you look at all of that, please let us know if you ever notice a certain field is not being grabbed. Uh, we can probably go in and fix that pretty easily. 
Um, but the reason for it is probably it just wasn't in the initial example data that was shared with us, especially if it's like an optional field. Um, a note on the metadata. So while it does return to you a dictionary, um, it's a pretty constrained dictionary at the end of the day, uh, which comes out of the whole NWB schema language, although this is a JSON adaptation of that. So if you're familiar with reading uh, JavaScript object notation, every interface or converter has a metadata schema. Um, your metadata dictionary structure is validated against that schema whenever you call run conversion. Although, nice thing about the NWB guide is it will interactively validate each entry as you modify it in a web form. Um, so you can fetch this via the dot get metadata schema method called on any interface or converter, and it will give you a very large object. I've cut this off pretty early, actually. Um, but at the top, you can see, well, the, the dictionary structure requires um, a device, an imaging plane, and some information about the two photon series. Uh, it tells you what a device is. A device is an array of uh, defined devices, which have some fields uh, that are in the dot, dot, dot here, called like name, description, and manufacturer of the device. Um, so you can spend a lot of time reading through that schema if you're um, comfortable with that, and it'll tell you everything that you can possibly specify um, and how you would specify it. Another really cool new feature. Uh, it's very common for experimenters to store all of their source data for an entire data set or an entire set of experiments in some kind of structured naming way, right? Um, so if you're familiar with Python f-strings, they're like one of my favorite things about the language. You can make any uh, string in a Python environment using variables that exist in that environment. So if I have a variable like subject ID that is a string named subject 001 or something, and a session date that's a date time, I can just use curly braces to insert them into another string, and it will automatically uh, cast everything. Basically what you used to do in C with like the weird percent signs and S's and yeah, all of that, Python does it for you automatically. Now that's, if you're thinking about this, that's how you would like construct those folders on your system. But we've done some work on our end um, because logically, mathematically, if I gave you a list of results of F strings that encode my data set organization, or, or folder path organization, those can oftentimes then be parsed or inverted to recover the actual values of the variables in those strings. And I've highlighted set subject ID and session date here in particular uh, because those are NWB metadata fields. So we can auto-populate NWB metadata not based on anything in the source data, instead just based on the actual naming convention of files or folders. Um, this is a fairly complicated feature, um, so I couldn't fit it all on one slide, but there's a very nice tutorial on the Neurocom documentation that shows uh, not just the full logic of how you use the class, which is called a path expander, and then you call a method called expand path, but we also have a bunch of examples in practice using, for example, uh, the Allen Institute Visual Coding Organization uh, where here they have like uh, session ID and session description. Uh, the Bazaki lab has another one where they organize by subject and then subject underscore date. And then IBL brainwide map where they have subject by date by subject number by EID, I believe. Something like that. So um, yeah, definitely check out the tutorial if interested in the specific details. Okay, now for temporal alignment, the one we've had many questions about. So all temporal data in NWB files must be aligned to the session start time. But as I'm sure you're all aware, there are a lot of ways of achieving that synchronization. Um, 
again, uh, similar to the path expansion, the full documentation of all these methods gets nuanced. We offer several methods uh, built into NeuroConf for handling all of that in the NWB sense. The simplest case, absolute simplest case, is maybe you just turned on your devices uh, with a bit of a delay in between. Uh, so here's an example experimental setup where you're using a national instruments board, probably with some spike GLX data. And you're, one of the channels on that NIDAC board, uh, one of the aux channels, is writing TTL pulses for when devices turn on or when frames are captured or that kind of thing. So we have a spike GLX NIDAC interface. You just point it at the NIDAC AP bin, and it has a built-in method called get event times from TTL. All it asks for is the name of the channel on that board, and it will return to you an array of times extracted from those TTLs. There's also a bunch of parameters for like how you actually perform the uh, parsing of the signal based on noise levels and whatnot, but the defaults have generally worked fairly well. Um, I did not import my deep lab cut interface in this snippet. My bad. Um, but let's say you have a deep lab cut interface. Um, I think I developed it off of Phi, and then I was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you synchronize Phi to the... Anyway, uh, so you have uh, deep lab cut. Let me just fix this. <laughs> this is going to bother me. Okay. I think deep lab cut actually takes a file path, not a folder, because it works out of H5 files nowadays. Um, but the logic is the same. You'd initialize your deep lab cut interface by pointing it at your deep lab cut session, and then you would align, you would perform the temporal alignment in a neuroconf script by calling the method align starting time on the DLC interface specifying your starting time as the very first TTL times that were parsed from that NIDAC channel. So that's all I could really fit on this slide, but again, the full NeuroCom documentation at neurocom.readthedocs.io. Oh, wow, it's such a heavy page, you can't load it. Whoa. Uh, the Wi-Fi cuts in and out. The Wi-Fi cuts in and out, you say? Mm. That's unfortunate. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, the simplest one I just illustrated is synchronization of start time. Uh, you can also synchronize full timestamps in the exact same way. So if your aux channel was encoding actual frame acquisitions uh, for like uh, behavioral video, then you can align the entire timestamp vector by calling set aligned timestamps instead of set uh, starting time. You can also do much more advanced things like interpolating the timestamps based on secondary systems. Uh, I should probably just explain that to you in person if that's the kind of setup that you use. Um, we're also adding some customized methods in the coming weeks probably for handling LEDs in lieu of uh, proper or full ECE FIS TTLs. Um, we also plan on adding support for digital words in the coming months. Uh, those are other cases where like, you know, we've seen them before, we just haven't built them as core methods yet. But yeah, the tutorial here has uh, much more in-depth information about how to actually do it. And it's the kind of thing where it's still more of an advanced feature, so should probably, uh, if it's something you need to integrate into your pipeline while you're here, just uh, flag me down, or Sonia, or Paul, and we'll help you draft it together. Okay, so that's the core of NeuroConf, but I would like to take a short amount of time to show you the uh, NWB guide. Uh, I guess a quick background, so it's been mentioned several times here, it's in development, uh, open source graphical interface developed around NeuroConf, basically just a pretty really, really nice wrapper, um, but it completely removes the necessity to know anything about Python or about NWB, because we literally, like a TurboTax form, we just take you through it from start to finish. Um, drag and drop all of your data from local folders, 
You don't have to type anything out. Uh, interactive forms for attaching all metadata, uh, the, and those forms will be auto-populated by whatever neural confines. Um, automatic validation and an even automatic upload to the Dandy archive. Once you have your NWB files, just tell us where you want it to go on Dandy, press the button, and off it'll go. Uh, the caveat currently only supports Spike GLX and Phi. Uh, the beta release upcoming at SFN 2023 will include all 40 plus formats. We're in the process of unlocking those uh, as we speak. Um, the guide comes with a built-in tutorial, again, with Spike GLX and Phi. If you don't have your own Spike GLX and Phi data, I actually have a small snippet of testing data that you can download easily from a Google Drive to test it out yourself. Um, but to com complete the entire workflow from start to finish, you do need a couple things which you should probably do while you're here anyway, uh, which is make an account on the Dandy Archive. That gives you access to lots of various resources. Um, but it does require a GitHub account. So you start with GitHub, then you go to Dandy Archive, and then you wait about a day for approval. Um, I told them to be on the lookout over the next couple of days, so it really shouldn't take that long. Um, and then to test out the guide, we will eventually have a very easy, built, executable, double-click, simple installation. It's not working yet. <laughs> Um, Ryan and I were desperately trying to last week, but we just couldn't. So you'll have to do a dev install, but we have very good instructions for how to do a dev install of it uh, on the README. Uh, basically, you have to clone the repository, create a certain kind of environment depending on your platform. Uh, you just create that from our pre-built files. Um, I didn't actually have to run npm ci. I don't, we can probably remove that from the... Uh, we could probably remove that. But um, all you need then to launch it is npm start. So I've already done uh, all of those steps. I actually weirdly had discovered I had to do sudo npm start. I don't know why. But I'm taking the risk of doing a quick live demo. And it opens up a little splash screen and very quickly loads the rest of it. So this is what it will look like on the entry screen. Um, the tutorial here, all you need to do is download that folder called eFi testing data and point your test data directory path to there. This is just forming a link between the two. Um, so I've already set it to my external volume drive. And then I just click generate data set. And up pops a little finder window where it's created a little data set for me. Uh, multiple subjects so we can illustrate the path expansion feature and multiple sessions per uh, subject so we can illustrate uh, certain session managing features that exist on the guide. Okay, and also when you generate this tutorial, it will auto-populate a uh, pipeline for you. So this is your pipeline screen where you can think of every pipeline as being a different NWB converter that you would have made in Python. It's every experiment setup, every data set you might want to do. Um, yeah, basically a unique collection of data streams. And so if you begin the process of going through the pipeline, it'll welcome you to the guided mode and it'll describe the process that will go forward. And you can always learn more by following these little blue info icons, uh, which will generally link you out to various other things across the ecosystem, like the NWB overview or NeuroConf documentation, so on and so forth. So here I can change the name of my pipeline. Um, I'll do this NeuroConf tutorial in person, user days, 2023. And uh, early on, we'll just ask for a specification of an output folder where you'd like to save everything uh, either temporarily or long-term. Uh, you can change this yourself, but it will default to home directory, NWB guide, basically where the rest of the application lives. Uh, I'll put this in my downloads just so I can easily clean the output when I'm done. 
And here we enter global metadata fields. So these are things that might never change across any session for this uh, conversion. So this is a user days experiment. My name is Baker Cody. Um, institution, Catalyst Neuro. Think up any keywords you can, WB user days. You get the gist of it, um, but this will uh, show you all, this is the cool thing, this will show you all of the different NWB and subject level metadata fields that the core NWB schema offers for you, as well as descriptions about how to interpret those values. So descript description of the protocol, notes about the stimuli, description about the surgery, um, if we move on to subject info, there's actually some more there. Um, although, oh, I just noticed the description there is a little different. Let me skip this one and we'll look at the better version in just a second. Okay, so on this page, we would select our data formats. Um, so if I wanna add an interface, uh, as I mentioned, only Spike GLX and Phi are currently supported, but everything we eventually plan to support at SFN 2023 is grayed out, but you can still scroll down and see all of them. Um, the tutorial pipeline automatically chose Spike GLX and Phi for us, but if I wanted to add another one, I still could, and I can give it a different name, uh, and I can delete it, and so on. Now proceeding to the next page, it's going to ask me where my data lives. Now I have two options here, and this is basically determining whether or not to use that path expansion feature. If I say no, I don't want to programmatically uh, locate data. Will this wipe my information? I hope not. Let me copy and paste that just in case. If I select no, then it will take me to the next screen, which I have to manually insert all my subjects for which isn't too bad, but um, boy, the path expansion feature is really nice. If I say yes, and the data is structured in a very nice way, in particular that we've already filled the format string for you, it's subject ID, subject ID underscore session ID, so on and so forth, and the Spike GLX uh, AP path mimics uh, all of that according to the Spike GLX convention. Um, Phi mimics the same thing, except that the last folder ends in underscore phi. Um, yep, I, and you need to define a base directory, which you can either, again, drag and drop from the finder on your system, or click here and just navigate and select it that way. Oh, it kept the one that was manually. Okay. Um, because I said not to programmatically infer to the start, it generated a, an example subject there. But as you can see, it found both mouse subjects and all four sessions from the example data ba based on the path expansion structure. Um, I'm going to select the sexes of each of the mice. This is a dandy requirement. It has to be one of those four options, male, female, unknown, or other. Um, I believe if anyone works with C. elegans, we have built in special options for those, um, but those are not on the guide right now. And you can select one of the species currently uh, supported by Dandy Upload. Uh, these are, of course, house mouse. And uh, I need to insert an age. It won't uh, complain for this right now, but it will complain later. Uh, you know what, I'll let it complain later. But if I need to add more subjects, I can always press that button. If I want to add anything else, I can. So for example, the strain, um, I could enter C57BL over 6J, and so on and so forth, including the weight if it was tracked. problem with live demos. Oh no. Ah, why are you doing that? 
Okay, I got it to work. <laughs> Sounds like a great feature to request. And you can do that easily by going to github.com slash neurodata without borders slash nwb dash guide and file an issue ticket, call the feature request. That sounds great. But no, we don't currently have that. Um, in neuroconf, that would be really easy. We have a util called loaddict from, well, it's loaddict from YAML. I guess you would just use pandas to read the CSV and get it that way. It, a lot of these things are like super easy in Python, like a couple of lines. Um, but yeah, love to have that in the guide. Thank you. You can copy and paste. Thank you for remembering that. So technically, if you open up the CSV, may try it if you want. May or may not work, depending on what type of table element we're using. Uh, so anyway, uh, the next session actually brings me to my session manager. Um, I realize I'm running out of time, so I'll try to finish this up so we can get on to data converting. Um, but this is the final stage of all input validations. So the first level is making sure that all of the source data actually exists and is specified correctly on the system. So yes, my ap.bin file exists. It's green. Yes, my five folder exists. Everything's green. Looks great. Now to the fun part, which is file metadata. And you can see, oh, I can't upload these NWB files to Dandy yet. In fact, I probably can't even, uh, might not even be able to create the NWB file. So all my sessions have errors right now. They have required fields that are missing. Uh, my species looks good. I use the Latin name of must musculus, sex is specified, subject ID. Ah, I need to specify the subject age or the date of birth. Um, and you can specify a range for this. So if I'm really not sure, I could do, well, it was between one week old and three weeks old. So I'll just type that in. Oh, everything's green. Validates interactively. And if I wanted to add anything else, oh, it was a wild type for that. Uh, yep. Okay, and that session now looks good. And I actually could have applied that um, subject age at the subject at the subject level, and then it would have applied to all such uh, sessions. So let me just copy and paste here, and I will demonstrate what it's like to select a date of birth. It opens up a nice little widget where you can actually navigate on a calendar. Well, I was born at that time on that day. And I cannot proceed further in the pipeline until this information is encoded. And at any point, I can run a little file preview of one of these sessions. So let me pick the second session from the first mouse. Whoops, never mind. <laughs> Let, let's do. Let's generate the actual. <laughs> okay, uh, that's a bug. But if we do the button called uh, Run Conversion Preview, it will run the. It will do the same thing theoretically on the first session of the first subject, and this gives you a nice HTML render of basic NWB file contents. Uh, you can navigate and see. Okay, there's an electrical series and acquisition called AP. It's at. 30 kilohertz, has a certain conversion factor to put it into volts, it's data. Um, I think we need to fix the HTML render for data. Right. right, but the little details button makes me think it should. No. Um, but it has electrodes that links to a table that has all of these various definitions of relative x and relative y position. Those are locations on a probe or shank. Uh, there are electro one shank in my electrode groups, a NeuroPixel iMac device, and a units table from Phi that has all these lovely columns on it, like amplitude, contact, uh, go sort label. And yeah, I don't know. I think that looks like a pretty decent um, NWB file, and so I will just say run all conversions. So I have four sessions here, 
Again, these are small files, so this step in particular, if you have very big data, will probably take a while, um, but that's why we give you a progress bar so you have some idea what's happening. Okay, I converted my NWB files successfully without error. Uh, if I wanted to upload these to Dandy, which I will forego uh, for the sake of time, I would need to go to Dandy, fetch my API key from the top right. I can show you how to do that at least. Dandy Archive, once you have a Dandy account, you log in and you click on your little name bubble at the top right and there's your API key and you just copy it with that little button and you'd go in there. Now you would need to create a Dandy set through the web API, uh, through the website uh, ahead of time. We eventually hope to have a page here where we actually guide you through the creation of one, but that's also not ready yet. Uh, so right now you would just specify Dandy set, oh, I don't know, 000004, um, and cleanup depends on whether or not you want to keep those NWB files on your local system or if you if you're just trying to get them up to Dandy and then uh, wipe it from your system, you can clean it up there if you want. I'll go ahead and keep them for now because I chose the downloads folder as my output. This is going to fail though. Um, and I don't want to actually upload to that Dandy set because that's someone else's Dandy set. <laughs> um, but ideally you would just run that and it would uh, give you the happy message at the end that your Dan your data has been uploaded and some summary information about the assets from the Dandy website. Okay, so thanks for letting me demo the guide there. Uh, sorry it's not entirely 100% usable for this event, uh, but definitely uh, by the end of this year it should be m uh, actually pretty useful for a lot of you. So. For the strategy for the hackathon, uh, starting now and proceeding until the end of the user days, if you have spiked your Lexify data, I do recommend at least trying the guide to get some base files for those. Uh, we really appreciate lovely ideas uh, and feedback, just like the import CSV table. Um, so if you have any ideas, please let us know about that or if you just have general feedback of the experience, uh, we're looking for feedback on that basically. If you have any other formats though that are supported by Neurocom but not available in the guide, uh, then start off with those conversion gallery snippets. Make sure that each interface can work on your data uh, without error. If there are any errors, please do report them. Uh, we'll, we have three, four people here on hand uh, ready to fix them as quickly as possible. Um, just flag one of us down, Sonia, Paul, or myself or Ben. And more importantly though, if your proprietary format is not currently on the supported list, like I said, please submit a request for it and maybe sit down with one of our experts here um, to see if there's anything we can do ahead of time to figure out how to read it in. This is actually an important step leading into the rest of the tutorials for today because um, if you don't know how to read it into, read your data into Python, uh, just yet, then that's a very important, very important first step that we need to figure out. Okay, that is everything I have. Are there any questions before we get started? Vincent was. So the conversion preview is actually now a core feature of every NWB file when you run it in a notebook. So if you read an NWB file in PyNWB in a Jupyter notebook uh, and you just print it out, it will have all that nice interactivity. You, right, you just have to type the name of the variable in uh, the cell and execute that cell. Yeah, 
having these five entities that make that unique to you, that that you look visualize like all of the members of the maybe in the head room, in the main the lower cone gallery, you can maybe put those books and pick up the data sets that kind of system will let you have there. And then open that and just look at all the put the you know the different uh, parts of the files you have uh -huh. Should I mention Neurosift just yet? Okay, so Neurosift has been mentioned, um, I think Oliver mentioned it very briefly. Um, it's still very much in development. It's like even, it's as much alpha as guide, uh, but it's very rapidly developing. So to combat exactly what you're talking about there, you can go to, I can only now, getting this to work on local files is still something we're working on. You, well, you can technically um, just use PyNB for that. But if you're, if you're browsing data that's similar to your own on the Dandy archive, here's what you can do. Um, let me navigate to, You can navigate to any uh, dandy set. I'll have a whole talk tomorrow on how to find good dandy sets and that kind of stuff. Um, but this is a very quick preview of how to openly explore exactly what you're talking about. Um, when you go to the files area of a dandy set, and you just happen to know that this uh, experiment, this dandy set has files similar to what you're looking to create, there are these little three vertical dots uh, next to every file. And you can click the button called Neurosift there. This will launch a very cool web browser thing. Now, precisely to what we were talking about is this raw view. And this is pretty much that uh, HTML rendering, a little nicer. But this will show you the entire file contents of the NWB in a very similar way. And that's all being streamed directly from the archive. So point it, just run it on, select any file you want, uh, EC fizz, O fizz, IC fizz, mixture of any of those, behavior, and uh, it'll at least give you a decent idea of the contents and the structure for introduction. Well, hopefully they were the ones that typed the variables when they were creating the data naming convention. Um, now, well, so, so, hmm. so you, you show, I think, like some variables came from like things like GL. Those weren't variables. Those were well. Those. You mean like the thing before the sub G naught and the sub I mech naught stuff in the naming I, convention? I, I just vaguely remember you said that there were some variables that came from it. Um, and maybe I just. Well, let's um, look at a specific but, but, example. Know, things like subject ID and these kind of things. Uh -huh. Is there a list somewhere for people where it's like that, that you can click together your path? or Like an interactive element? element yeah, for like putting together a path expansion? Not yet. It's all specifically through Python code. Uh, good idea. It's, yeah. That sounds like a good idea well, for the guide. <laughs> Please make an issue for that. Um, yeah, it's a little tricky because some formats allow you to customize things like that. So if we look at like specifically Spike GLX, some things are fixed in terms of like their, you need them there for it to count as spike GLX convention. Um, and so that's the G knot for segments and the IMEC knot for probe, I believe. Or no, the T knot might be for segments. They're both segments. Right. We're so lucky to have a neural, NeuroPixels expert with us. Um, 
and yeah, so like that part of the naming convention is fixed, and the a the suffix is of course the ap bin. What is variable, I think, is everything before that leading underscore. Uh, so like noise for Sam, that's a variable. That. That, I don't know what that would map to an NWB file metadata, but oftentimes people will put like the session start time or date as a part of that, or they'll put the subject name. Yes. Spike GLX is one of those awesome formats where that timestamp is implicitly encoded inside all those nice metadata files. So. You never need to specify it or read it from source uh, file names or something. Uh, another one would be like Neuroscope. But like all of that file name is variable. And so it's completely user defined. So our assumption would be the user knows how it was structured. Okay, so several video files representing like different segments of time for each video, but one Okay, so there's two sides to that. There's how that gets represented in NWB, and then there's how NeuroConv does that. The first is your continuous signal would end up as one electrical series, probably with a constant sampling rate. Your other data streams would end up each as different neurodata objects, potentially. Uh, each as separate image series, what we call, uh, if they're just simple videos, uh, then each of those would have a separate. So do you actually track the frame captures within each video or just the starting times? Perfect. In that case, you would just set in NWB the, a different starting time for each video that's relative or aligned to the electrical series. That's how it would end up in NWB. Now, how you do that through NeuroConv is there's a video interface, and you would initialize multiple video interfaces, one for each file, and you would, I imagine, uh, you would parse your TPTL times through any of the previous methods from the continuous stream, and then you would just call align starting time on each interface separately, and that would do that. That would set it up to write an NWB in exactly that way. Okay, let's dig in until the tutorials this afternoon. Uh, again, if you ever have any questions, run into any difficulties, just raise your hand and uh, someone from the CN team will come by and help.